to another Bible study Saturday. We have Brother Gio, Brother Jave, and we have a new guest today, my brother Elton. Today we'll be going over John chapter 6, verses 1 to 21. We're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Elton and end off with a prayer by me. I'm going to buy heads and close your eyes. Oh, my name is God. Thank you for bringing us here another day, God. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you and covering us, God. Thank you for everything you've done for us throughout this week, God. Hope does this be a blessed Bible study, God. Hope that someone learn from something from it today, God. And can you bless us and cover us on their blood. In Jesus' name, in your name, amen. Amen. Cool. John chapter 6, verse 1. It says, After these things, Jesus went over to the sea, went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias or Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were deceased, deceased. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples and the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh, nigh meaning close or next. All right. Um, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. See that? Look at Jesus, right? See what he's doing, Ezra? Yeah. He's just asking a question. What seems like it's a surface layer question, but he's always digging at the deep, digging deep, right? Into, into your heart and trying to figure out where you are. Not figure out, but he wants you to figure out where you are. He knows where you are. It says, um, Philip answered him, 200 pen penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, um, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. And there was so much, there was much grass in the place. Wow. <laughs> he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So the men sat down, and number and in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he had said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of the truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. So we'll pause right there because it looks like the story is switching up. So based off of what we read, right, from 1 to 13, what do you think is happening, Ezra? Now, I thought they were about to have a feast. Okay. Elton, what do you think? From 1 to 13, first it started off by Jesus testing the people of faith that surround him. Then after that, it shows off that from other stories before, like the power of Jesus still exists because he took the five loaves and two fishes and fed over 5,000 people. Hmm. That's exactly what happens. <clears throat> I would even look at, I mean, I don't want to get into the geography of it. Uh, we might be here a little bit long, but verse one, in terms of him going over the Sea of Galilee. But if you go to verse two, um, why did a great multitude or a large crowd follow Jesus? Because they saw the miracle that he, that he did. Yeah. My question to you and Elton is, why are you following Jesus? Because I see how he worked in my life. 
Elton? I said one of the main reasons is because I sense Bert. I guess that's all that was ever taught to me. As I grew up, like I seemed to, like, to believe more and more by seeing what's the stuff happening around me. So you had your own experience with, with, with Christ and the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, it sounds like, right? Um, yeah. Somebody ask you, why do you believe in Jesus? What would you tell them? Me? Yeah. I'm saying, I never really felt me believing in Jesus. Wait, what did you say? I was telling you, it never failed me believing in Jesus. Never failed you. Never failed me. Okay. I mean, I, let's say I'm your friend. Like, you know, we're in school together or I'm like your coworker or something. And it's like, like why do you even believe in Jesus? Like, how, like, how do you even know he's real? I don't know. It's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. Just feel like it's real. Okay. Sir Ezron Productions. So basically, you know, like when you sit in a chair and then it breaks, and then after you go and sit in another chair, you know the reason why you do that? Because you have faith that that other chair is going to pull you up. And it's basically, it's the same thing with my belief in God. I believe in God so much through troubles, through anything. I'm going to continue to stay with him through all of that thing. And it's just the feeling that you have inside that it's, it's, it's very hard to explain. Like, you got you to gotta experience it to really understand, like, the, the feeling of it. But, but also believing in God, it's just it's never done any harm to me. It's never put me in any bad trouble. And it's never failed me. I'm gonna, ask you, I'm gonna ask you this question. Um, so I'm gonna ask both of y'all the same question a few weeks from now after we journey through this book of John. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I was saying. Um, I know both of y'all said it, it's a feeling y'all can't describe it. That's true. I just, I just want to <clears throat> add to uh, add a tidbit. Don't always depend on the feeling, mm. right? Because you won't necessarily you won't always wake up feeling saved. And that's not because you sinned last night. It's, it's just feelings are fleeting. They come and go, right? So you may wake up one morning, you don't feel holy and so spiritual, right? So it's not just a feeling. It has to move from a feeling to you knowing that you know, right? Y'all got to be like the three Hebrew boys, right? Even if he don't deliver, I know. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not, I feel. It, you know, I understand. There's a feeling. Yeah, you feel a certain way um, following Christ and when you have an experience with him. But you, you got to know so that when you're up against situations, you, you guys get older, you have more responsibilities, things in life starts to happen. It's not, you know, I feel. It's a, I know God. I, I know him who he is, what he's able to do. You know what I mean? Rest in that. Yeah, that's that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. So that's why I said I'm going to ask you the question after because what's key is that Jay said you have to know him. And, and how do we get to know him? Reading his word, right? It, it, it tells us more about who he is. We spend more time with him. He... He gives us new things as we as we read the word and we learn more things about him. And those things get downloaded on the inside of us. And just as Jay said, it, it changes, it transitions from a feeling to a concrete, I just know. Like I know what I know. And there's nothing, no one, no situation, there's no place that can take that from me. Because I know what God is. I know who he is. Right? Well, I'm just, I pray that you don't have to go through it, but I'm almost certain we all go through it. And you're going to be like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like it. Like, I want to see if you are going to be able to post these videos about God 10 years in the game. I want to see if you like, well, you're just going to have this dry spell and you're just like, yeah, nah, I ain't feeling it no more. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, that's happened before, but I still had to get them out. Yeah, so 
that's that's the only reason why I just wanted to point that out, right? They followed him because of the miracles, right? Um, I just want to see why you guys follow him. What's your reason? So as we learn more about Jesus through the book of John, as we go through it, I just want to see if your 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 um, your stance and what you would say to somebody if they ask you why you believe in Jesus and how you know he's real. See if it changes. All right. So now verse three, Jesus goes up onto a mountain and he sits with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. So we I, did we describe to you what the Passover was? Yeah. Elton, you know what the Passover is? I don't remember. Real quick. Uh, you heard about Moses and the nation of Israel leaving Egypt in the book of Exodus? Mm-hmm. So the night before, the night that they left, rather, um, God told Moses to tell the children of Israel to uh, kill an animal, a lamb, right? And take the blood of the lamb and put it on your doorpost of your house where you live. And God said he's going to send the angel of death to come and kill some some people in Egypt. But he said that blood is going to let the angel of death know not to go in your dwelling and kill the people in your house. The angel of death would pass over your house and continue to move on because he sees the blood. So um, he also told them to make bread, unleavened bread. So before you add something like a, a leavening agent, like um, like yeast, right? Like you know how we see bread is so flat and fluff, like it's a, I mean so fluffy. In order for that to happen, you have to put something called like a, a leavening agent, like a like baking soda or something, though, to make it rise and puff up. God told them, you don't have time for that. You guys have to leave this place with haste, quick. So all you gotta do is just make make leavened bread, like flat unleavened bread, which is flat. And, and we're gonna use it. You're gonna eat this as a reminder of the Passover, and you're gonna make it like a celebration, like a feast. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna have it every so often. Okay, so they're still celebrating this way, like from way back when Moses was was in charge. Now Jesus is here, and they're still celebrating this Passover feast. Okay. So he says, the Passover feast of the Jews is nigh, right? And then verse five says, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw, you know, a great company coming unto him, as the people that would follow him, he says unto them, unto Philip, Philip was one of the disciples, right? He says, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Like, where are we going to buy bread from so that all these people can eat? Notice how Jesus is concerned about feeding his people. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't even know if the disciples were worrying about it, but notice how Jesus was worrying about it. And, and and he's concerned about making sure that they're fed in the physical. Well, as we learn to grow and, uh, and go deeper into this book, we understand that God is not specifically focusing on the physical, but he then learns to focus on the spiritual, feeding us spiritually. But he's just asking the question, Yo, where are we gonna get bread? We're gonna get buy, we're gonna get money from. Are we gonna buy bread from? And six and in verse six he says, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. So Jesus knew what Philip was gonna say when he asked that question. What was Philip's response? Um, Philip's response was um, like, how are we gonna feed all these people? If he was to work for months, we would not have enough money to pay for this many bread. All right. It's too many. So, Jay, you want to pick up eight? Yeah, yeah. And, and before eight, um, Jesus is not just concerned with uh, the spiritual portion or a spiritual man, right? Um, but he, he wants to meet every aspect of us, so the physical as well. Right, so um, he's focused on the whole man, not just the spiritual. And it's important that um, as you're sharing your videos, as on and you're doing your thing, that you're ministering to the the body, the soul, and the spirit. Right, a holistic ministry. 
Um, verse eight, um, Andrew Simon Peter's brother spoke up. There's a young boy with five barley loaves and two fish. Um, again, they're looking at the the five loaves and the two fish, and then they're looking at the crowd and they see impossible. How is it that we're going to feed 5,000 people with food enough for one person? Right. Um, and again, uh, Jesus is just setting up um, this situation for revelation. Right. Um, to know that he is indeed a provider. Now, you would think the disciples having seen him do a couple different miracles over and over again would be like, nah, you got it. It's yeah. all good. We know where it's coming from. <laughs> but nah, Philip is a fool. He's like, yo, how are we going to pay for this? Yeah, like, it just said a huge crowd followed him because of miraculous signs. It's, it is crazy. It's crazy how they go back to being so faithless, right? But Jesus is like, All right, since y'all y'all can't obviously see what I'm doing, so everyone sit down. I got this. Right? And so he paints uh, this situation for revelation. What's the revelation? That he is Jehovah Jireh. He is a provider, right? No matter how difficult or impossible it seems, um, he is able to do that. Uh, the Bible actually says with, with man, things are impossible, right? But with God, all things are possible, right? And that's an encouragement for us, right? That no matter what we're going through, that God is able to do what we may think um, seems impossible. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I like how, like as I was reading, um, verse ten, he said, "Make them sit down." And there was much grass, and immediately I thought of Psalms twenty-three. Immediately, I just like, yeah. like he he leads me beside the still waters. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, like. You just, I just see peace. I see tranquility. I see love. I see, Is it? yeah, it's just, it's just, I, I just see this, I, I see like a nice cool breeze making the grass blow back and forth. Like I, I just see like a, a real nice day to have a picnic with Jesus. Yeah. Like, and the, and, the, and the, he set the atmosphere for him to, to move, right? So he positions the people for them to receive. They all sit down, and, and they're they're looking for this next miracle, mm -hmm. and and I, I wonder if the people knew, outside of just that 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 young boy that was with him, um, which is crazy. Now that I'm thinking about it, let me just sidebar real quick. All these people, all these adults following Jesus, none of them thought to bring food with them except for that young boy. <laughs> it's like, and it's just like, like the intentionality, like how intentional God is. Y'all, y'all all not that smart. Here we go. Here we go. Listen, you, you seventeen now. Don't, don't, don't act like you young. All right, don't act like you that young. <laughs> all right, so. Just, just like any of that happened by chance, like I think it all was divinely yeah. planned out, right? And it just shows that your age has nothing to do with you being a vessel for God. Like he could use you and you have no idea how, when, what, where, like, so I, I just, so I just get back and then just, so Jesus is setting the ground, putting his people in position to receive what he's about to do for them, mm -hmm. right? And, um, Like they weren't even thinking about eating. They're just focusing on following Jesus and seeing what's the next miracle he's about to do. But Jesus is concerned, like like Jay said, about the full man, the holistic man. And then I like it, right? And and then like if my kids ever ask me, like, why do we gotta say grace? Like, why, why, why you just keep to eat? Or, or like when like I got a thing, like when there's a bunch of us gathering around, the first person to touch the food without saying grace, oh, oh, you gotta say grace, you gotta say yeah. <laughs> and, people, and you gotta see the reaction. Like people get mad, I'm like. If you only knew, like, look what Jesus did in verse 11. Somebody read that for me. 
Then Jesus took the loaf and gave thanks to God and distributed them out to the people. Afterward, stop. Stop. just right there. He took the loaves and gave thanks. Prayed over the food. And it was out of his prayer and out of his faith in God who sent him that enabled him to just keep letting that food multiply. Every time I eat, right, I pray over my food. In my prayer, I ask that God provides a meal for someone else out there just as he did for me. And in the event he needs to use me to do that, then I ask him to simply provide the way. And I promise you, bro, as I'm talking to you, this week has been exactly one of those weeks because I saw so many people came up to me this week. I took $20 out of my, out of my like, little piggy bank to carry me for the week. Like, I know I wasn't going to use it because I'm like, I'm moving so much. I got time to, you know, come back home and grab something to eat. So let me just have 20 out of my pocket just in case. When I tell you, I think I probably spent maybe f- a couple dollars of that 20 on myself. The rest of it was just given. Like, people just kept... Some dude walked me to the car. I sat in the car and the door was open and he almost was like like pulling open the door, wouldn't let me close the door. And he's like, yo, yo, I need to eat. Can you, can you feed me? I'm like, yo, here, here, just here. Take it, take it. <laughs> here you go, take the bread. Another dude, I'm standing in line waiting for some jerk chicken at the spot, right? And my, you know, it's crazy. Somebody was paying, was buying me the food. Somebody gave me money to go buy my food. And while I'm waiting for me to get the food that somebody bought me, some dude will to me like, yo, go back here, dollar. Oh, oh. I'm like, and here we go, being an idiot. I'm like, what you need the dollar for, bro? What you need the dollar for? You want something to eat? I get you something to eat. He's like, oh, word? Well, if that's case, you can give me a meal. I mean, it's going to cost you more than what I'm asking for. I said, you know what? All right. He said, I want to buy a DVD. I said, you want to buy a DVD? It's 2020. I'm sitting having a whole conversation with this dude. <laughs> I said, you know what? Take the dollar. Take the dollar. And, and, and it's just like, when you pray, understand that God hears you. And if you got to be the vessel, then I promise you that it's, it's better to be obedient than, than to not be obedient, right? Like, sure. like, like uh, our deacon, deacon Kitchener says, giving is happy time. Like it's it's great to have something to give, right? And we got we have to be mindful of that. Yeah. Better to give than receive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just to um to fully paint the picture again, uh, when it, when they said it was thousand people there, the crowd was five thousand. Um, that head count was only men, right? So you you have to assume that while it's not um, indicating that that they did bring their wives and their children. So it was probably a good ten thousand people that well not maybe maybe eight or ten maybe so it was a lot more than than the five thousand right so just just notate that well, only Jesus only Jesus only Jesus and look look at the uh, look at the position that the disciples hold right he says he distributed to the disciples and the disciples that and the and the disciples to them that were sitting down so. If you're going to follow Christ, if you're going to be a disciple or like a student of Christ, like a follower of Christ, understand that that comes with a responsibility. And that responsibility is service. So the disciples had a job. God gave them, Jesus gave them the the food and they had to distribute it, right? And, you know, he distributed the bread and then he distributed the fish. And this is when all the people were full. It's not like they were like hungry looking for, you know, like he gave them a good meal, fed them. How you say in Jamaican? Belly full up. Belly full. <laughs> Belly full, right? It, it says they gathered the fragments. Like there was left over. Bro? Yeah. Five fish too low. What's well, five five loaves, two fish? Tens of th- like thousands of people. And there's still leftovers. I, I wonder what the disciples were thinking. They saw this man turn water into wine. They saw him heal people. They 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 they're with him from day one. 
And now they're seeing him feed thousands of people with a small meal to feed one person. And I look at the, the other side of that. So I look at the young boy. Um, and as it pertains to us, don't minimize what you think you can offer God. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it, you may not, it, in our natural eyes, you may not think it's a lot or much. Um, but whatever you bring to God, just as he used the boy's two fish and five loaves and multiplied it, or whatever talent you have, whatever gift, bring it to God, use it for God and watch him advance, watch him multiply that gift in or that giftedness or that talent that you have. Bring it to him and watch him do it. Okay, so now we go to verse 14. Um, so remember the previous chapter, right? He's Jesus is talking and he's saying that he is God or the Son of God. He's equivalent with God the Father. Because he had did something um I think he healed someone on the Sabbath day. Yeah, remember he healed the uh, the man that was sick, that was in that area for like mad years. Sitting by the by that the, the the I think uh um Was he in there for like fifty years or something like that? I know you've been there for a long time. Yeah, he was sitting by the water waiting for the waters to be troubled again. Thirty eight years. Thirty eight years to be healed. <clears throat> and so it looks like they, they came back, right? Verse fourteen says, Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said this. This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Forgive me, that's not the same people. These people want to raise up Jesus as a king. But it's not that time for Jesus to be exalted as a king just yet. Timing is everything. And so he leaves, right? He senses what's about to happen. He, It's like, it's so weird, like these people like yearn for a leader to be physically before them. Like they they really want a king. And I know I know we, we, we didn't start in the old testament, so you can see how like how much of like how much they were fiending for a king, but they still have that same that same MO, like they still have that same mindset. And so Jesus is like, no, 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 it's not the time yet for me to be exalted as king. Let me stay low. Let me stay on the path. Let me, Let me stay on the ground. You continue to do what God is calling me. I know I have, let me stay on the ground. I know I have 10 million followers on YouTube because these videos that I'm posting about God, but let me stay low. Let me stay low, right? Let me follow and continue the course. And so he says he departs again in the mountain himself alone. Verse 16, it says, when he, and when even was now come, or when the evening came, nighttime, right? His disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and 20 or 30 furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. It's in the middle of the storm, y'all. And the, the boat is rocking crazy. You feel like you're about to tip over and you think you're tripping because your eyes see a man walking on water. And yeah. Verse, yeah. yeah, now you're like, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. I know I'm not. Yo, 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 E, come look at this, boy. <laughs> come look at this. All right. Oh, yeah, he, he bugging out. Mm-hmm. So verse 20 says, but he saith unto them, it is I. Be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land, whither they went. Just like that. So like, so like, did the ship move real fast, or like, did it hover up in the air and like landed? Like, I'm really trying to figure out how that ship just got on land like that. It, they were traveling. What do you mean? You traveled across the water. It was a wind that was blowing. You know, but it's immediately they they was on land. So I'm saying, like, did the ship just like like go past like real fast? Like, 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 what happened? 
Jesus, man. Jesus <laughs> happened, man. What you want me to do? <laughs> Jesus happened. Like, they were in a boat. They were rowing, doing their thing. It was a great wind that blew. Jesus pull up. All right, let me speed this up. All right? Like, he made, I don't know. He put, like, a motor on the back of the boat. I don't know. <laughs> you did something. I don't got all the answers, but it just says immediately, right? The ship was at the land where where they went. So they followed when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other, none other boat there, except the one wherein two his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. How be it there come other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread? after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Jay, help me out with that one. Cause it looks like that day the following people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one where the disciples had entered and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were going away alone. Is there, are they trying to say that like it was kind of impossible for like Jesus to be in the middle of water because there's only like one boat there. The only boat there was the boat the disciple had left in, and then they just met Jesus in the middle of the sea. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to figure out. It says, "How be it they're coming other boats from Tiberius." nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after the Lord had given thanks. Um, and the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there and neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. So the people were looking for him after he had the, uh, the episode of feeding him, right? And they realized that he wasn't there. Him or his disciples weren't there. So then they went to Capernaum, right? Because I think that's what it says. Verse 17, they entered into a ship and went over the sea to a Capernaum. So the people were looking for them and they left. They went to Capernaum, so now the people are following them towards Capernaum. That 22 to 24? I just realized we went beyond the, we went beyond the line. We should stop at 21. But, um, yeah. I mean, we read 22 to 24. For me, it looks like the people came looking for them um over where they were by Tiberius and Galilee and realized that they weren't they weren't there. And right. so they got in the boat and they came over to the Capernaum where they went. Um and so yeah, because verse 17 it says that they got into a ship and went over the sea to a Capernaum. So it looks like they fought they, these people are following them now. Right. Seeking Jesus. Um but that's pretty much where we can leave off today. Because um, if we go any further, then we're going to go into another story. Different story, yeah. And just uh, the reason, note the reason why they checked Capernaum first is that's where he made his hometown um, in Galilee, his home in Galilee, right? So Capernaum is always where, or he was around that vicinity. So that's why that was the first place they figured to check for him. Mm -hmm. Um but going up back up, just one thing I want to leave y'all with, going back up to when he walked on the water, this phrase with y'all um, as we close out. And I want you to just meditate on it and ponder it for the week. My, my Bible says, uh, faith is a mindset that expects God to act. Okay. So I just want you to, to dwell on that um, as we close out. Faith is a mindset that expects God to act. All right. To think about that um, and see, you know, see what God speaks to you, speaking to your spirit this week regarding that, right? Faith is a mindset that expects God to act. And I, that's a word for me and myself. Yeah. Myself. Right. That's, that's a word right. for me. Mindset that expects God to act. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. So, um, give me some takeaways before we wrap up. Basically, like to sum this stuff up, um, God, like I said before, God was just testing his people just to see how much they had the faith in him, even though after all the miracles do, just to see like where they are with him. 
then he proved to them that he's still capable of everything he's prom like he's promised and showed to show to them. And like over and over he kept proving to them he was walking in the middle of water. It's like don't be afraid, you could trust in me. And just like he's like that's like I'm gonna stop off because if I continue I'm going to the next story. But he's just keeps showing them, reassuring them that you can trust in me. And I'm capable of unbelievable things. So basically like the same thing where Alton said. Because God will, God will continue to test your faith over like the course of time just to make sure that your faith is solid and you're really believing in him and not just serving him based on what you see other people do or just based on like some other um, like reason or explanation. And he always will, he always will find a way to provide for you or help you do anything that's what I, that's my testament so this story first couple verses obviously we saw um, a picture of faith painted my question for y'all what is faith what does that mean to y'all what, what, what's faith it's believing in something you can't see yeah like what else is that Nah, 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 nah. You ain't gonna do that again. <laughs> you see, you <laughs> what he said, what he said. <laughs> uh, your Bible to Hebrews 11 and 1. That's your answer. Or at least one of your answers anyway. You got it? Well, I'm about to go down to it right now. Elton, you got it? Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Yeah. Faith shows us the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things not seen. What version is that? NLT. NLT, let me pull that up. No, so I was going to read what King James said. You going to understand what King James said? Let me read it first. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. So what's faith? What's it? If, you had, if you had to tell somebody, you're going to walk up to like, listen, faith is the substance of things. They, they're going to understand what you're saying? Now I have to reword it. What does that mean? Hold Look at the NLT. It's it's pretty much what 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 Elton said, and when he was like, "Yeah, what he said." Yeah, yes, yeah, so I can't say that. So I was trying to find some different words to explain it. I so whenever in doubt, go to the scriptures, brother. And that's all I was trying to do. I was just trying to give you a scripture to reference. Whenever you, you you're not sure how to explain yourself, or people don't believe you, listen. This is what the scripture says, and I believe in the scripture. So this is what it says. This is what I'm. This is what I'm relying on. NLT says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance that things, about things we cannot see. Mm -hmm. Jay just said, faith is expecting that something, that God will do something, that something is happening. Cool. My takeaway real quick, because I got to run. But my takeaway is, I don't understand the love of Christ. I can't fathom it. Like he's doing these things over and over and over again just to show us how much he cares about us. This just shows how much he loves us. Like how many miracles does he have to perform before we, we really understand that it's not about the magic I can do. It's not about the, the, the make it, rub, the, rub the, the lamp and, and make three wishes. It's not about that. It's about the relationship that I want from you. There's so many greater things that I can do for you than feed you with fish and bread give you some good cook up. There's so many things I could do, so many greater things I can do. I just need you to believe in me, trust in me, stay close to me, walk with me, talk with me. I got you. Yeah. That's, that's my takeaway. Yeah. For me, you know, pretty much what Gio said. <laughs> yeah, you fool. <laughs> no, we gotta rewrite it. <laughs> uh, um, for me, 
as I said earlier, faith is what really stood out to me. Um, but not just faith, um, faith in, in the impossible, right? Um, and just seeing God work another miracle. Um, and pretty much, don't be afraid. No matter how crazy the sea of life may be or how rough the, the waters may be of life, um, Jesus said here, I am here. Right? And we can have that same assurance today that no matter what's going on, Jesus said, I am here. Right? So he's with us no matter what we're going through, no matter how hard it seems. And he is able to do what, me, we, what we may think is impossible. Um, he, he is able to do um, the impossible. Right? So, um, Love that. Love that. And notice how they, they didn't even call on Jesus. Homeboy just appeared. And immediately they was on the other side. Just dropped the motor on the back of the boat. That was it. <laughs> That's it. All right, gentlemen, thank you for another week. We'll pick up um, next week from like one from twenty two to whatever, right there from twenty four to. We could we could we could we could start with twenty two and then just like really so we could start from the beginning and then continue through. Okay, I'm gonna do my end off, my end of prayer, and then we just gonna close this video. All right, oh, patch your joint. Yeah, pad. <laughs> Anyways, everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. Reverse with God. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. You're holy, you're mighty, you're worthy. So much words to explain how good you are, God. And we pray as now we just came together as brothers to be able to discuss your words, God. We pray that we'll be able to learn and you to be able to point out all the key information that we need to learn from these chapters, God. We pray that we'll always remember the, remember the meaning of faith and why we truly believe you, why, why we come to you every day, why we pray unto you, why we live this life with you, God. We pray that these videos will be, will be inspirational and motivational to the people that's watching, to be able to help them on this journey, to be able to help them to have more faith into you, God. We pray that as we go through our lives, as we go through ups and downs, we remain with you through everything, God. Our faith remains strong with you, God. We pray that those mornings that when we don't feel you, that our faith is still there, God. We pray that you stay with us and you guide us through the upcoming week, God. We pray that no one perform against us our prosper, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. All right. Bye. Yes, I'm <laughs> I felt yeah, that pretty much. Like, y'all are fools. <laughs> 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 yo, yeah. you gotta get we gotta get Eon on this, man. You gotta wake up. Can't be three Hebrew boys, but only two. Just two of y'all. Right. Right. This is the very end of the video. I uh, pray that you guys keep coming back every single week. Come along in this journey with us. Uh, and uh, Bro, you do a video every week. You every know, week, bro. I don't understand. Bro, I, I was just trying to make sure I got everything out. That's how I posted it. So I was like, Put put it on a little sticky note on yeah, your computer. You so. <laughs> now you got to start over. Got one job. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Leave me alone. All right, you're right. Make sure you add this little blooper in your video. Okay. <laughs> so, you realize I'm gonna edit this out anyway. So yeah, you, add you gotta leave some of this stuff in. What you mean? My content, man. What you talking about? I might. I might. Okay. I'm gonna redo it. Okay. I got this. this Yo, y'all can't laugh because y'all got so many balls. So I got a new weave. You don't know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we done. We done. Let me see my composition. Come on. All right.
This is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for coming back and watching with us. Thank you for coming on this journey with us. We'll be back next week with the middle of John chapter 6. This will end up being a whole three three videos just for John chapter 6 because it's up to 71 verses in this chapter. But we're still going to make these videos. We're still going to learn and we're still going to point out all the key information that God needs us to learn in these chapters. I pray that you guys come back, share this video with anybody that you think needed, and that's the end. Please like, subscribe. See you guys later.